What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Comfort Zone, your place for some casual, comfortable commander. I'm your host, Dan. That's your host, John. John, what are we doing today? Today, our gameplay might be a little trashier than usual. Oh. We're doing a battle <laughs> of junk decks. I'm going to be running Othelm and Warnog, the Friends Forever Commanders, with a straight-up artifact junk style deck. Clues, blood tokens, treasure tokens... All the artifact tokens, and we're gonna make a lot of them, hopefully. Sweet. And we over here are running Nethroy, the apex of death. Um, and our Ugh. colloquial junk is gonna be creeps, baby, specifically ones with very low power, so we can abuse Nethroy's mutate ability to take our entire graveyard and go ka -pa bam And hopefully uh, <laughs> overflow the uh, scrapyard with our true to form you know, biological organic junk, uh, which is obviously superior. So uh, it's going to be a good time. We're going to see what happens. But huge announcements. If you guys have not heard or did not see, we just recently launched our Patreon and Discord. Uh, so the Discord does have a free to access lounge. So you can come over and be part of the community and we can just chit chat around. However, through the Patreon, we get a little bit more perks as well as some extras. And both of these projects we're going to be developing and adding to over time. So definitely go ahead. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon, take a look at the Discord if you want to be a bigger part of the community. And stick around because over the next few months we're going to add things to this so it's going to be a lot of fun we're very excited about it so and and of course oh sorry also tell us if you want to specifically see something through these mediums because we're looking to have you know guest input you know viewer input and then uh continue to develop that direction as well but without further ado get comfortable because it's time to play some commander are you ready oh bro big <laughs> dice we got a nine Medium dice. We got a two. Oh, so dude, that, nine's bigger, I think. I tripped you up because I, I didn't use you my did. beholden dice. Yeah, normally right, you roll like 15s off, and up. That's only. All right, so we're going to come out with a temple of plenty tapped. We're going to scry one, and we're going to leave that on top, and we're going to pass a turn. Nice. We're going to draw. Oh, snap crackle uh, cards. Command Tower. And then we're going to follow it up with a Birds of Paradise. Oh, what am I, you? Who am I, you? <laughs> All right, pass. All right, we're going to untap a draw. We're going to take a second look at that. Oh, man, that's really, really rough. Okay, we're going to play Canopy Vista to Tapped and pass the turn. Hey, yo. Ooh, we're in the lead, bro. We're in yeah, I didn't realize. Lead. I didn't realize that the lands, the lands did what the lands do. Nobody does. Swamp. Yeah. Then, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to make a lot of usage out of that uh, the old bop today. But we're going to play a Hermit Druid, the classic, mm -hmm. the boy of throw your deck into the graveyard. Uh, he is a two mana one one for a summon druid. For a forest and tap him, I can reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal a basic land card. I put that card into my hand and all other revealed cards into my G yard. Pass. All right, we're gonna untap. We're gonna draw. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna play the Deathcap Glade, which comes into play untapped because I have two or more other lands. Nice. It's like Before. Canopy Vista, but way better um and then then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right to the stuff uh-oh uh, i don't know what that means all right so we're gonna tap the canopy vista and we're gonna tap the death cap the temple of plenty we're gonna tap these two because that's what i want to do and we're gonna play a nature's lore and with that nature's lore we are grabbing a temple garden and we're gonna put that into play untapped with the loss of two life and for a white and a black, we're gonna bring in Wernog, the Rider's Chaplain. So what Wernog does is he is a one, two. When he enters or leaves the battlefield, each opponent may investigate. Each opponent who doesn't loses one life. I investigate X times where X is one plus the number of opponents who investigated this way. 
So are you going to invest in oh, it? Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. So there's going to be our clue token. And we're going to take a nice D20. And I'm going to get one and then another one. Because you investigate. So there's two clues. Boy. Then we're going to pass the turn. We are going to start with the old spicy uh, hermit druid. Bop. We're going to reveal cards on top of our library until we get a basic land. We got Multani, Yabamaya's avatar. We got Dam. We got a forest. Eh, all right. Things could be better. <laughs> uh, but forest going to our hand. Dam going to the grave. That's our uh, colloquial board wipe. And Multani, which is relevant because he does have a graveyard ability. Um, so for one and a green, I can return two lands I control to their owner's hands to return Multani from my graveyard to my hand. Uh, otherwise, he gets power and toughness, blah -de blah We'll see him when he comes out, if he comes out. Then we are going to throw down a Temple of Scrywance. And we're going to scry. Ooh, we're going to keep that on top. And then we are going to tap two. And we are going to play the Perpetual Timepiece. The Perpetual nice. Timepiece is an incredible artifact. Uh, it allows me to tap it to put the top two cards of my library into my graveyard, or I can pay two and exile the perpetual timepiece to shuffle any number of target cards from my graveyard into my library. Uh, that's it. Pass. Alrighty. Going right for the untap. After we untap, we upkeep, and now we draw. Alright, so my hand is not a long list of cards I wish to be using right now, so we're gonna have to do something about those. So we're gonna tap uh, a one, two, and then a three. And I'm gonna play uh, Relic of Legends. Relic of Legends is so good and so strong. Uh, it allows me to tap true. a mana. It allows me to tap to add a mana, but I can also tap uh, legendary creatures I control to add a mana. Um, so that's just a phenomenal ability. And then we're going to tap it and we're going to tap this guy and we're also going to tap this land and we're going to play uh, the Weirding Wood. Um, so the Weirding Wood is an enchantment or enchant land. I'm going to chant this one. Um, so when it enters the battlefield, I investigate. Tick. Um, and then the land can tap to add two mana of any one color. So mm, nice. Uh, reorganize our lands here. And then unfortunately... We're out of lands and other things to do, so you're up. Sweet. We're going to untap. We're not using the Perpetual because we want this card. We're going to draw that card. And we're going to play a basic forest as my land for turn. Now, let's see. Three, four, five. Okay, we've got some mana. We are going to tap four. And we are going to play the Beast Whisperer. Um, which is just a 2-3. Whenever I cast a creature spell, I get to draw a card. And uh, that that's it. That is a very good card. We are going to pass. All right, so we were going to try to look for a clue token that tells you what clues do, but we're going to leave it as that right now because you ended your turn super quick. <laughs> so we're going to draw. And, oh, oh, nice. I love that card. So we're going to tap this for a 2 of It Doesn't Matter. And then a three, and then a four, five. Uh oh. Uh, and we're gonna come in with a closet. And that closet, closet is gonna conjure some stuff. So the conjurer's closet is an artifact. It says at the beginning of my end step, I may exile target creature I control and then return that card to the battlefield under my control. So that is super fun because if you guys remember, his ability triggers on leaving and on entering the battlefield. So that's Not gonna bad. get hard to keep track of um then there's nothing else to do so we're gonna pass and a turn leaves the battlefield do you want another clue token what's the damage thing again what's his damage if you don't make a clue you lose one life that's it that's it okay i guess i'll skip it all right so i gain I'll, one I'll skip it and you times. lose a life oh and he comes in you're gonna lose another life go up the five clues though um yes, and then and then that's it that's the whole turn gnarly end of your turn i am going to activate my boys uh we're gonna do a hermit druid trigger there 
Uh, oh, wow. A plans. Immediately. Oh, whatever. It's still wow. like draw a card, you know what I'm saying? Not too bad. And we're yeah. also going to perpetual type piece. So we're going to mill nice. two as well. So we're going to mill Haro and the Sakura Tri Builder. Alrighty. Not the we're best mills to... you've ever hit in that deck. That's oh, okay. Sakura's not like terrible. And I didn't really terribly want Haro right now. So like I'm alright with it. That's fair. Then we're going to go to my turn. We're going to draw. We are going to come out with that basic planes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to play the Dead Bridge Chant. Uh, oh, I like that card. Yeah, when it enters the battlefield, I put the top 10 cards in my library into my graveyard. At the beginning of my upkeep, I choose a card at random in my graveyard. If it's a creature card, I put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, I put it into my hand. So we're going to take 10. We're going to have Skull Prophet, Takanuma, Forest, Kalani Garden, Cultivate, Casualties of War, Crawling Sensation, Mulch, Crashing Dawn Bridge, and the Tree of Perdition. Ooh. So as far as creatures, we got Skull Prophet, Tree of Perdition, Crashing Dawn Bridge. The rest of it is just, you know it, junk. Get it? <laughs> um, so those are going to go in. And then we are going to move that over there and pass our turn. Boop. All right, end of your turn. I'm going to tap this land. And you best I'm tapping Wernog, and I'm going to sack one of these tre- Uh, not treasures, they're clues. It says it right there. I'm going to draw a card. Gnarly. All right, so now we go to untaps. And you betcha, we're drawing again, because that's how magic works. Then, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to, uh... Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to have this, uh, this godless shrine come into play untapped. Because... Mana. Then I'm gonna tap. Uh, I guess I'm gonna tap that for two green and that for a white. And we're gonna come in with another legendary creature, Othelm, the Sigardian Outcast. Um, they're friends. I don't know why. Um, he is a two-two that has tap two and tap him. Choose target creature card in my graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to the battlefield tapped. So that's nice. super relevant, obviously. <laughs> then, how much more mana do I got? Um, wow, that's so strong. Okie dokie. We're going to tap that for whatever it taps for, that for whatever it taps for, and this for a black. Only one of those colors of mana even matters. Uh, and we're going to come up with Nadier's Nightblade. So Nadier's oh, Nightblade... Nice says whenever a token I control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and I gain a life. So that's super good. Um This is true. But she's not legendary, so basically we don't care. <laughs> really? Then let's tap um the this thing and Wernog and we're gonna sack another clue to draw a card. And you're gonna lose a life because of that, and I'm gonna gain a life. Oh. Instant value on that Nadir's Nightblade. Uh, and then we're gonna, then we're gonna go to the end step. Leaves the battlefield. Do you want to investigate? Nah. All right, he I'll comes back in. Do you? No. Word. Okay, and then, uh, and then you're up. Don't think you can play me, bro. I'm gonna tap the perpetual timepiece. We're gonna put the corpse connoisseur into our graveyard which notably has unearthed which allows me to go dig for a boy and put it into my graveyard and we're gonna get a swamp pow then we're gonna go to our untap our upkeep and our drizzle okie dokie okie dokie we're gonna slap down a brush land oh and i forgot the trigger mod b uh, but it doesn't matter, so land, we'll just keep that there. And then, uh, this guy, at the beginning of my upkeep, I gotta choose one of these things at random? Oh my god. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Alright, so we'll give it a good old shuff. And then we're gonna roll a d20. Um, and we'll ignore anything above 16. And then we'll go top-bottom. Ha! We got a 1. Okay, convenient. It's a swamp! <laughs> Oh, well, there yes. we go. 
the reason I I remember never really loving Dead Bridge Chant is because it yeah, just draws it's one you of them lands. cards. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. All right, now we already played a land, so we're just going to keep on motoring. We are going to go ahead and tap our Birds of Paradise and a Hermit Druid to do our digging. We're going to get a Grizzly Salvage and a Plains. Okay. Hermit Druid, you know, putting in work. Wow, man, we are hitting gold every time today. Our, our dredging and milling <laughs> is just straight up on point. Um, but that's how it be sometimes with the, with the old dredging. Definitely. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Then we'll go ahead and throw out this man. We'll do two mana uh, for the Seder Wayfinder. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, I reveal the top four cards in my library. I can put a land from among them into my hand, and the rest go to the graveyard. So, we're going to reveal an Avenging Druid, a Murmuring Bosk, a Lightning Greaves, and a Polychronos the Unchained. So, Murmuring Ooh. Bosk will go to our hand, the rest to the G-Yard. Okie dokie. And then, we'll go ahead and we will tap three... And we will cast the Toxic Deluge. Oh no! And we will ask you what your highest toughness is. Uh, three. Three it is. We're deluging for three. We're going to pay three life. And what all happened? creatures going to get that minus three, minus three. Oh. Um, I guess a response. I'll tap my two commanders. And sack a clue to draw. That works. That's acceptable. Pain you again. And Pained. then, yeah, goodbye. All right. Uh, that's also going to wipe me over here. That's okay. Such is life. All right. That's going to be it. It's your turn. All right. So, you know, there's a... That's a thing that happened. On tap, yes, we'll draw. We are gonna have to play a brush land. Then we're gonna tap the brush land and uh, this relic over here. We're gonna play an arcane signet because who nice. doesn't love the arcane signets? And then I gotta uh, count what one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh man! All right, well, we're gonna do uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. And these will be black, I guess. Uh, we're going to come back out with Warnog. So he's going to add to the battlefield. Do you want a clue? Not a chance. Alrighty. Let's take that one life. What are you at, by the way? 30. Yeah, so not a lot of damage has been taken. Um, one, two, three. Alright, and then we're going to do something really weird. Because I probably should have done this first. Oh, I couldn't have. Never mind. One, two, um, three, and then four. Because of the relic. Doesn't affect by summoning sickness, which is super dumb. We're going to play the Panharmonicon. Ooh, nice. So, uh, Panharmonicon, for anybody who doesn't know. Um, if an artifact or creature enters the battlefield under my control, causes a triggered ability of a permanent eye control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Uh, then we're gonna go to the end step. Do you want to? Do you want one? Nope, I don't want either of them. Well, then he comes back in and it triggers twice, so that triggers three times. Totally. I don't want any of them. All right, so I'm gonna go up to eight clues, and you're gonna have taken the three life, and That's then it's correct. gonna be your turn. Sweet, end of your turn. We're gonna perpetual time piece, nature's Hell lure, yeah. and a relentless pursuit, or oh, whatever's. All right, untap, upkeep, upkeep, dead bridge chant. All right, we're we're out of dice range, so you tell me some number, and I'll go down that many. I mean, how many is it total? Twenty-six. Let's do thirteen, right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Bow! It's a basic forest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. The best part is that the oh, Dead Bridge no. champ might have put that there to begin with. So it's like. Oh, it's certainly possible. 
All right. Wow. We are. Oh man, we are on fire. Um, in some kind of like bad gastrointestinal way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Murmuring boss revealing the tilling tree folk. That's right. I'm able to reveal a tree folk, everybody. So there you go. Right. You never. Low value. Um, so that's going to come into play on tap because we're a G, uh, absolute, 100%. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wow, we're suffering. Uh, we are going to tap 1, 2, 3, 4. Why not? And we're going to play the Timeless Witness. When it enters the battlefield, I can return target card from my graveyard to my hand. So we are going to go digging. You know what we're getting. I don't, actually. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get casualties of war, baby. Oh no! The yes, sir. The I don't thing like that card at all. Destroying the various objects. That's it. It's going to my hand. We're passing. All right. So end of turn. That's it. All right, we're on tapping. I don't like that you got casualties of war in your hand at I all. Be having that. We're gonna draw. Alrighty, so what we gonna do is we gonna tap a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a uh, five. Uh, no, five, because that would have been too many. Um, and we're gonna come back out with, you guessed it, because I had my hand on it, Othelm, the Guardian Outcast, back because friends that die together come back together. Nice. Or something, and then we're gonna tap this for two green... And these each for a green, so that's four green. And these are both going to tap for whatever they want. I'll give it their choice. And then we're going to come in with the Feasting Troll King. Ooh. I love this card. So Feasting Troll King uh, is a Vigilance Trample 7-6. When each bees, if I cast from my hand, make three food. I'm making six food because of the Panharmonicon. Not bad. That's a lot of junk. Oh, that is some tasty, tasty junk. Foods oh. and clues. Everything. Yeah, see, now it's a junk deck. Before it was just a clue deck. Now it's a junk deck. Yeah. There's six of them. Boom. Ba boom, boom, boom. And then, and then you see what's going to happen after that is we're going to go to the end step. So we're flashing Wernog. Do you want one? I want none. You want none? So you're going to lose three life total. Yes, sir. I go up to 11 clues. Then, somebody's turn is it going to be, and it's yours. Word. End of <laughs> turn. I'm doing stuff. Okie dokie. Uh, first, I'm going to crack this clue. Boom. Bet you didn't see that coming. Um, no, actually. Then, we're going to perpetual team pace. We're going to get Life from the Loam, which notably has Dredge. Allows me to return up to three target land cards from my graveyard to my hand if I dredge it. And we're going to get the Migratory Great Horn. Uh, mutate three, random dude. All right. GR they go. And to my turn, I go. Uh, if my math is correct, that should leave 20, oops, 26 cards in here. Let me give that a, a shuff, and then you can tell me what number. What number? Um, let's do seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pow! It's Polychronos, the Unchained. Nice! Uh, so Unchain that boy. He's gonna he's gonna go into the B field. Uh which uh, what does that mean for him? <laughs> um he enters the battlefield with six counters on it. If it escaped, he enters with twelve plus one counters instead. So unfortunately he's not escaping, so it's gonna be six. Wait, I thought he went to your hand. Battlefield? No, no, no. If it's a creature, it goes onto the battlefield. Other cards. Oh! Oh, uh, no! If damage would be dealt uh, to Polychronos while it has a plus and plus counter on it, I prevent that damage and remove any number of plus and plus counters from it. Uh, I can pay three and have Polychronos fight another target creature. Um, and he has an escape thing, but again, we didn't really utilize it, so there we go. Um, sweet. Um, so he's into play. Sweet. And then we're going to draw. That was, that was quite nice. I did not yeah. expect that reality. Uh, then we are going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Well, that sounds like that guy. So, is it time? I think it's time. Uh, time piece, that is. Whoa! <laughs> We're going to time piece real quick. We're going to get gather the pack and Celestia Sanctuary. Lame. Then, we're going to tap seven. And I'm going to cast my commander, Nethroy, the Apex of Death, uh, for his mutate oh, no! ability. So we're going to mutate him on to Polychronos. Uh, we're going to mutate him on top. So, the creature on top is the main creature. If you guys haven't seen mutate, it's a very wackadoo ability. But basically, this creature's name is determined by the creature card on top as well as power and toughness. And it gains the abilities of both the creature on the top and the ability box of the creature on the bottom. Anytime that a creature refers to the name of the card in the text box, it's really just referring to itself as a generic term, me. So this is actually a really cool interaction that I've never had happen before in this deck. But basically, Nethor is going to gain Polychronus' bottom abilities here, uh, which is going to say that if damage would be dealt to the creature, Paul Kronos, but now Nethroy. While it has a plus and plus of counter on it, I'm going to prevent the damage and remove that many plus and plus of counters from it. Uh, he also has the ability to pay three to fight another creature and happens to have Death Touch, which is kind of cool. Um, now he's pretty chonky, so the Death Touch, not extremely relevant, but whatever. Uh, Nethroy himself is a 5 5 Death Touch lifelink, and whenever this creature mutates, I return any number of target creature cards with total power of 10 or less from my graveyard to the battlefield. Um, and right now he's an 11-11 if anybody cares after the counters. So we are going to take a flip through and make a determination. This deck loves anybody with zero power because they're just a freebie. Okay, so we got all these guys for free. That's the Crashing Dawn Bridge, which is a 0-4 defender wall that I can tap it to give creatures I control haste until end of turn. We got Multani, who's a Reach Trample. He gets plus and plus one for each land I control and each land in my graveyard. And we got Birds of Paradise and the Tree of Perdition, which you guys aren't familiar. This card's kind of weird, but it's a 0-13 with Defender that can tap to exchange target opponent's life total with the Tree of Perdition's toughness. Then we have a full 10 power to still work with, ironically. So we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, we got to make a trade. Let's trade out this guy for this guy. That should work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. We are going to get the Migratory Great Horn, which is a 3, 4 that says whenever this creature mutates, I search my library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped. Corpse Connoisseur, uh -huh. who's a 3, 3 that allows Ooh. me to go into my library on an ETB to go get a creature and throw it into the GR. Sakura Tribe Elder, you guys know Stevie. Uh, we got Avenging Druid. This is an old weird card if you guys have never seen this guy. Uh, it is a 1-3. Whenever he deals damage to any opponent, I reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal a land card. The land goes into play, and I put all other reveal cards into my graveyard. We're going to get the Hermit Druid back, and we're also going to get the Seder Wayfinder back. So we got some ETBs. Oh, d -d 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 -dear. <laughs> <laughs> we got some ETBs to stag and trigger and such, but it's not too many. So we're just going to need to go ahead and Seder Wayfinder, and then we'll Corpse Connoisseur. So we reveal the top four. Uh, we got the Farhaven Elf, the Old Stick Fingers, uh, mm. Boneyard Lurker, and Crawling Infestation. We did not get a land, so all these guys are just going to go right to the graveyard. Uh, and then we are going to search for the Corpse Connoisseur. See you in a second. We are going to throw the Bane of Progress into the G-Yard, which if you guys are familiar is that dude who'd be destroying all the artifacts and enchantments and stuff, which seems maybe strong in this scenario. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get boots or anything during the, the preceding turns of this game, which is what makes Crashing Dawn Bridge a spicy hit. For now, he also has so many sickness, so he cannot hastify my team, which is a little bit more disappointing. But we didn't play our land, um, so we are going to come down with a land. Um, and we're going to play the Bajanky Bog. So if you got anything in there, get rid of it. Nadir's Nightblade and oh, and the Nature's Lore. That's rough. Got him. <laughs> All right. And then um, that's it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done. Um, um alrighty, so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna untap and I'm gonna just organize these lands a little bit. Artifacts over there, this over there, 
green black and then most of these are green and white and then this guy okay so we're gonna draw yep so we're gonna tap four five six seven and we're gonna play blood money board wipes be working um in we response respond. to my own oh okay. you're gonna respond too okay no, then you, you, can, you go no, first no, no, that's no. fine you hold priority go ahead my friend i'm gonna flawless maneuver Sure. To keep my creatures. Very nice. I am going to respond much less successfully and sacrifice Steve. <laughs> hey! To go get a land. Let's throw that out there and then, yeah, wow, that works. Hey, board wipes, you know? They still print those and they still they work. They do! And some of the ones they print are really strong. So for anybody who doesn't know, I guess actually, this is important. So yeah. Blood Money says destroy all creatures. For each non-token creature destroyed this way, I make a tapped treasure. That's 11, my friend. And then I Flawless Maneuver, which I can cast for free if I control my commander. Um, and then my creatures gain indestructible. So I don't lose my creatures. So how many? Must be nice. Yeah, 11. Uh, then, uh, then we're going to tap two, three, four, and we're going to come out with Krark Clan Ironworks. Oh my God. So Krark Clan Ironworks allows me to sack an artifact at two mana to my mana pool. Whew. Seems nice. Then... Unfortunately, I forgot that those treasures came into play tapped. So as I think should. that's actually, as they should, you're right. <laughs> I think that that is better for the card being a functional magic card. But it did throw off what I was thinking I was going to do. So instead, instead what we're going to do is uh, uh, hope you can't, Get that bane of progress, and we're just gonna go to the end step. Word. So I'm I flashing my guy. My clues. I'm taking my clues. So you're taking three clues? Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. Which means I make six of them. Yeah. Okay. It's your turn. Alright. Now we got 34 cards in the yard. So if you could please pick a number between that. Let's do 31. All right. Count backwards. Four, three, two, one. You didn't want to let me count forwards, bro? Come on. Sorry, if you could, but I just didn't think you <laughs> no, wanted no, to. No, I'm just kidding. Of course I don't want to. What'd you uh, get? Relentless Pursuit. This is a reveal of the top four cards in my library. I can put a creature card and or land card from among them into my hand and then the rest go into my graveyard. All right. Then we are going to our draw. Draw this uh dude or munch you know what i'm saying uh, i know exactly what you're saying come on now and we're gonna come down with a forest who knows what any of these lands are look at these little grayscale boys they could be anything i could be over here just tapping them willy-nilly for whatever i want to do you never know i don't watch your land Three, tapping four, at all five, six, seven, eight, ten. <laughs> we got ten uh that's enough for this and that's enough for that i think sure why not uh we are going to tap three um and we're going to play the tilling tree folk uh this is a one three when it comes into play i can return up to two target lands from my graveyard to my hand we are going to return the takanuma and the kalani garden lord uh takanuma has the channel ability um for three and a black, I can discard it, mill three cards, then return a creature or planeswalker card from my graveyard to my hand. It costs one less for each legendary uh, creature I control. Kalani Garden just be making a plant. Nothing oh, too yeah. exciting. Uh, then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are going to cry deeply over the mana expenditures of things. And we are going to play out Kalani Garden, making ourselves mm -hmm. a plant, uh, which we will illustrate in a moment. 
And then we are going to tap one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, black, black, green, green, and two. And we are going to put out the casualties of war. Oh dear. Um, so we get the hit boys. Uh, let's hit the food dude, right? What does he do? Anything that stops me which, from being able to which, favorably annihilate him? The the king, the, the guy, the guy, the, the big troll? Guy, troll. Oh, the troll, he has a uh, sack three foods, return him from my graveyard to the battlefield, activate only uh, during my turn. And he has vigilance and treble. That's all. Huh. What's his ETB? Is that when he makes the food or is it? His good? ETB is make three tr uh, food, but only if I cast him from my hand. Oh, okay. All right, fine. Yeah, then yeah. let's get the troll, um, and let's get Creature. the Kark Clan Ironworks. Okay, artifact. Um, and let's get the enchantment that's on the land. Oh, no. And then we'll get uh, whatever relevant land you don't want to lose. Do you have a... What do you got there in that pile? Um, Pick one that is the... Green... <laughs> least I mean, desirable. like three of them make white green... Uh, four of them make white green. One makes green black. One makes white black. All right, get rid of the green black, I guess. Okay. Boom. Oh, I think that's um, it. I guess in response to you targeting the ironworks, um, I'm gonna ditch a clue to sack. I'm gonna sack a clue to Krar Clan to pay the two mana to activate the clue. All right, so we're going to draw, and then you know what? We're going to go down to more, and I'll draw again. And then two more, and I'll draw again. And then I'll go down to food and a clue and draw again. Okay, that's it. All right. So that resolution's very nice. Um, and then... Uh, we're gonna pass. Yeah, why not? Okay, dokie. So we're gonna untap. And uh, we're gonna draw. I'm gonna tap um, one, a black, and a green. But really just one, a black, and another one. And we're gonna come out with Agent of the Iron Throne. Gnarly. So Agent of the Iron Throne says the commanders of creatures I own have whenever an artifact or creature I control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent opponent, each opponent, opponent. loses one life because I have two commanders. They both gain that ability. That's a GG. There yep, what's your life total? Do, yeah, I'm at 24. So uh, 11 treasures is already 22. Yep. And I'll wow. use the treasures to sack some clues. Uh, that, that feels anticlimactic, even though like I know that's like exactly the objective of the of the deck. Like when we talked about yeah. it, like even that card specifically. Um, yeah. But yeah, you got it, bro. GG. G. G. <laughs> well, dude, Agent of the Iron Throne, you did it. Yeah. No, I mean that was kind of when we talked about making this this deck. That was kind of the goal. We we're like, wait a second. If I'm gonna run these two, and I was trying to figure out a way to have a win con, Age of the Iron Throne, because I have two commanders, like, it's not Marionette Master, but, like, it's, I have two commanders, and mm -hmm. two life per thing I sack is two life per thing I sack, like. Yeah, well, we talked about that a bunch of times, like, with respect to backgrounds and stuff. I think we said it in some of our podcast stuff, but, like, looking mm -hmm. at backgrounds in the 99, specifically with partner-based decks, is just really oh, yeah. powerful. Like, I... There's the one I, I constantly try to get people to play. Well, you obviously specifically, um, but it's that red one tavern brawler or whatever. I, I like. It's yep, it's I, over there. <laughs> I forced it on him in in um his uh, Yoshimaru deck um with uh what's the guy's name Ragra, Ragra uh, yeah, yeah Ragra Yoshimaru deck because my card is insane in a Boros based deck with partner uh, because really like ignore the power buff. Basically, the card exiles a card off the top at, the, at your upkeep, and and the the target commander creature or target creature I'm not I'm not sure gets plus X plus zero equal to the CMC or whatever, and then you can play until end of turn. Yep. The power buff alone 
good, but really the card is basically saying like impulse draw one card for you know having your commander out. If you have a partnership, all of a sudden you get to impulse draw two cards on a turn. Yep. That's in, that's incredible. I mean, Valkyrie Exploration or whatever is a playable card that impulse draws you an additional card at three CMC per turn. Um, the cons one, the the like outpost siege or whatever, is a four yep. CMC card. The impulse draws you one per turn. So like the tavern brawler, at, I think what is it? Is it two CMC to play? Uh, it's two or, or three. three. It's not so, expensive. Either way, the the fact that with a partnership it can get you a two impulse draw per turn and mm-hmm. a buff, that's insane. You know what I mean? In this situation, yeah. Iron Throne is similar. Um, with the you know we talked about it a bunch but the crazy like density of artifacts that are going around him this deck is literally like almost like a satire of that by doing like i'm just gonna play them all junk junk um Mm -hmm. but of course agent the iron throne in this situation is insane in that same variety you know so it was cool getting to see it actually like happen happen yeah Yeah. no i agree yeah no i i love it i i haven't played this deck as much as a lot of my other decks so like getting to see it work in the first few games that it gets to play in its like existence as a deck is always nice to be like, I had to run a lot of numbers to be like, well, I want to make sure I see all the different things. Like obviously the highest density is clues because my commander makes clues, but like otherwise it's really nice to be like, okay, so like I'm getting some treasures. I have things to make food. Like I would like to see blood tokens, but they're the worst of the four. So, um, but and spoiler, yeah. yeah, if you guys didn't see it, the Fallout decks, um, which as a person who's played Fallout, I'm middle of the road excited for it as a whole, but they literally printing a junk token and I 100% will be adding that to this deck as well as the Nuka-Cola machine, which whenever oh, you so sack good. a food, you make a treasure. Yeah, something of that nature. It's so good. But- something ridiculous like that. Very excited for the additions to the deck. Yeah, it's super funny, like, that without any knowledge whatsoever, like, John had built this deck a, a couple months back or whatever. Um, we just hadn't premiered it on the channel because, you know, we're working through our insane number of decks. So without any knowledge of, um, you know, the Fallout set, John had already had, like, a, you know, what we've coined as the junk, junk deck, you know, because it's mm-hmm. junk type old junk deck. And then all of a sudden they're making a new artifact token and it is literally junk i mean that's hilarious um so i'm very excited very about excited. that as well to see in the deck but it was really cool and after Roy, you know this is an old uh tried and true deck for me this is uh the one i made when ikoria came out um i really liked mm-hmm. after Roy as far as um uh, like the the big mutate legendary guys went uh, i mean he's the apex of death which is really sweet um and i loved the idea of like abusing zero power dudes in grave i know that there's some like higher uh powered up versions of the deck um that don't necessarily run the card slot i run and they run that one dude skyclave whatever if you guys haven't seen this i'm sure you can google it but it's pretty crazy there's this one guy ah oh, gosh i wish i could remember his name. i i swear it's skyclave something he's uh one of the black and basically his power and toughness are equal to like um, 20 minus your life total or something, I think. Um, but basically, long story short, in a game of Commander and he's in your graveyard, it'll check his power in that same variety and it'll actually give him a negative power. So Nethroy uh... sees the negative and adds to the allotted amount of power that you can take. Um, oh, that's sick. So there's some like, kind of disgusting. really weird deck where you go and basically try to grab him and put him into the grave along with some other like fat guys and then use Nethroy with the increased power accessibility to pull him out. Um, for me, that strategy requires a little bit more like tutor and setup as opposed to like the chaos of just generic like dredge and mill. Um, and I wanted to go for more of a like, I'm just going to throw my library into my graveyard and see what I get. Um and also, again, I just wanted to, like, play cards that are, like, Tree of Perdition. It's not that great, but I wanted to play it because it's fun and it has zero power. Mm-hmm. So um, I really like Nethroy. This is a bit of a classic for me, and I liked that I got to do the Nethroy thing. Yes, we did it into a board wipe and effectively lost ourselves a game. Say la vie, baby. This is, this is Magic the Gathering. That jank can happen all the time. That junk can happen all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the cards do what they want. 
That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, the, car, the cards be the cards. Um, but it was a lot of fun, and hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. Let us know in the comments if you got a junk deck, if you've explored the Abzan territories or, you know, what have you. Because, um, of course, we always are looking for new brew ideas, and it's very exciting. And... Don't forget uh, to go check out the Patreon and the Discord, guys. You know, of course, it's early days for us, and we just launched this, and we're really excited about it. You know, we want to keep growing and producing new content and new ideas for you guys, and of course, any support helps. So if you love the channel or if you just want to show a little love, uh, feel free to check out the Patreon and consider supporting us there. Otherwise, if you can't or don't feel like it at this point, just hop on the Discord. We have that free channel available to you guys so you can see what, you know, the background is all about we can help to build that community and you guys can get involved and we're excited to have you there but thanks for joining us today and for being casual and comfy with us and we will see you in the multiverse <laughs> <laughs>